Welcome you guys, Crypto Monday, Sam Wong. Let me get a round of applause, you guys, man. Let me get a round of applause, this man here. You guys sound like shit, man. Let me, let me get a round of applause, man. Welcome, Crypto Monday, Sam Wong. Welcome, I am Justin McCabe. I'm from Seattle, but I live in Costa Rica for the last yeah. over 10 years. Hold on, sir. Let me, let, me, uh, let me get into a picture with you. Alright, you guys. Alright, you guys. We got a special guest in the house tonight, man. We got a young man by the name of Jeff McCabe. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the crowd, man. Go ahead and let them know who you are. I'm Jeff McCabe. I'm the CEO of the Jitty Project. What, what's the baby's name? Elias. Elias? Yeah. You make all the noise you want, homie. You're good. <laughs> good. Birthday? Birthday? Oh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Sick. We gotta sing a happy birthday. Oh, man. We're gonna sing you happy birthday. Yeah. Shit. Sure. Good second. Matter of fact, let's get a happy birthday for the baby, man. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Shot now, he's good. All right. all right, you guys. So, we got a young man in the house tonight. He's come all the way from Seattle, Washington. Is that, sir? Well, Costa Rica. Costa, Seattle, Washington, by way of Costa Rica. He's got great GPS, y'all. Um, so, but uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you're doing down in Costa Rica, man. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of the Divi Project. We've got a few uh, Divi fans here. They invited me here. <laughs> and, um, we did an ICO in 2017 during ICO winter, and um, we raised 2.7 million. Ow! Which we were glad to raise at the time, because basically Ethereum was taking all the ICO money at the time, and um, it was considered to be ICO winter. And uh, but basically, to be honest, it was my worst nightmare when it happened. I had told my partners, I said, the worst thing that could ever happen is it just barely hit our soft cap of 2.5 million and we're going to have to build all this. Um, so we just barely hit it, um, but I'm happy to say we've done really well. Our market cap now is 14 million, so we're considered one of the top ICOs, one of the top 10 ICOs by value created from our initial investment. Can you get a round of applause for that, man? We're from 2.7 to 14 mil. You know, I, people ask me to talk about Divi and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about some of the actual history. It's actually interesting. It's actually very entertaining. Let's uh, let's back up a little bit, man. Let's give a little bit more about you, sir. Your background and how did you come to this point? Yeah, so I'm going to rush. I'm going to tell you my little my personal story, but I actually want to tell you some sort of inside stuff since we're all friends here. About so when I talk to a lot of other CEOs, the best stuff is not like what they can do, but it's also all the drama and stuff that happens to the founders and all this stuff. They're these great stories. So I kind of want to tell you what happened because. I don't know how many of you are involved in projects, but it's, it's good sometimes to hear about all this shit that happens with these other projects and how people find their way through it and survive these things. Well, it's just like family, bro. Nobody's family's perfect. Yeah. So, like, you know, like if you think your family's crazy, I promise you, you haven't met any Puerto Rican people. Yeah. So, <laughs> that being said, with that being said, um, yeah, no, there's always an invite. Listen, I can tell you what. And I actually got to me next. Hey, 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 get with the camera. Okay. Sit right in front of the camera as usual. Um, so, Max is good for that, boy. I got a good shot of your back like almost every week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, Nehemia actually gave me this piece of information actually, which was uh, what happens as soon as I see as soon as they raise money, what's the first thing that happens? Well, uh, people start to fight. They start to fight every single time. Like every every single time, the minute you raise your 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 the capital you're looking to raise, as soon as they raise, you raise your money. As you you have a whole bunch of chiefs, no Indians. Everybody thinks they know exactly what it is they're supposed yeah. to be doing, and all of a sudden, you know, that's when everybody hates each other and wants to branch off and do their own thing. Yeah. So that's normal. So yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a lifelong geek. I was president of my high school computer club. We got fifth place nationwide. Um, I was a coder. That was pretty much the last time I did coding. So um, I went to graduate school. I got a master's degree in physics, and I realized. Can you hear me? Much better. Much better. So 
Yeah, I got a master's degree in physics, and then I realized that all the jobs at that time were building weapons, and I was really not interested in that. I didn't want to do it, so I ended up taking a hobby at that time, making jewelry, and I went to China. Ended up at a factory with about a thousand workers in China, and I was 250 sales agents, and we sold all over the world. We did 12 million dollars a year in sales. I was about 25 years old at the time. I thought it was hot shit until I heard Reeves' story last week. At the same age, he sold his company for $6.6 billion, he said. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, every, all that thing, one thing Puerto Rico will teach you real fast is that you're an all-star amongst a team of all-stars. Yeah. And it like, puts things in perspective really quickly. Yeah, so I, um, I learned a lot. Everything, everything turned into a disaster. You, know? you learn the most when things are failing. You know, you think, especially when you're young, you just think you know everything, especially when you're succeeding. And that happens a lot, I think, with ICOs. People raise this money and they think they know what they're doing. And, and they didn't, nobody really realized, like, how stupid the money was pouring into ICOs, right? So, so basically, yeah, so I had that company um, that I ended up moving down to Costa Rica and I started a real estate company and I started a yoga business there and a, and a um, an eco village there. So I have an eco village at the permaculture center. So that's where I live now and hang out there with my wife and, and child. So I am also the CEO and founder of the top virtual reality blog called Virtual Reality Times. So I kind of stayed in touch with the whole tech world and it was always my dream to start a tech company. So when cryptocurrency came around I really wanted to start a virtual reality company, but you need like a hundred million dollars to start anything viable. And but crypto looked like something that could be done by a small team. And I had a friend who lived there, and he said, "Oh, I'm, my brother, he's, he has these genius coders, and we're going to start this cryptocurrency company. You know, why don't you join us? We need a CEO, and you have business experience." And I kept saying, "No, no, I don't want to do that." And I was perfect life in Costa Rica. Why do I want to screw all that up with? sitting in front of the computer. I know how to start up, sorry, I've done it a whole bunch of times. And, and I kind of retired from that and I was enjoying my life surfing and yoga and all that. So somehow he talked me into it. He said, well, we're doing it without you. And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I didn't know these people. I had a friend, you know, a friend that I surfed with um, in Costa Rica and his brother and two other guys. And um, so we did this whole ICO and they kind of put me as their figurehead CEO. I was the only one with any business experience, and so immediately I was like, well, what are we doing here? And, and they said, well, in other words, kind of come up with an idea. Like, they were going to launch this without an idea. And I said, well, I'll tell you a good idea. You know, crypto is really confusing. It's really hard to use. You know, everybody I know, you know, is afraid when they hit that send button. Somebody needs to solve this, you know, because this movement of crypto is going to run out of geeks that are unwilling to tolerate this really fast. We need to we need to make this. We need we need to. We I, I normally don't mind, but we got a baby in here, so I don't know who's smoking weed. Y'all cut it out. So I said we need to make a cryptocurrency that's really easy to use, and um, and people not to worry that they're that they're going to lose all their money when they hit the send button. And so we had this internal philosophy of if it's if you can't do it drunk, then it's not good enough yet. So. <laughs> Never laughs, but it's, one, it's true, right? You, if you're going to pay with crypto at, at this bar here, you don't want to accidentally send your life savings, but that's possible with, with the way most wallets are set up, right? So, um, so we thought that would be a good thing to do, and we thought everybody would understand. We started talking to people right away, and people would look at me like I was crazy, like, what's hard about crypto, you know? Where they would say, oh, everybody's doing that. I heard that one a lot, and still nobody's doing it. You know, it's still, still confusing. And, and most people here, every time you send $10,000, $20,000 Bitcoin, it's paranoid. Your hands shake like this. When you hit the send button, you check the address three times. And, and I'm still talking to people. Somebody told me a story the other day that they sent $20,000 worth of Litecoin to, the, to a Bitcoin address because they had done a copy and paste. They thought they had pasted the address. And it didn't take. You ever think that happen where you, don't, where you copy something and then you paste and it's not what you thought? Is it really the thing from before? You know, with these long names, you don't have human readable addresses, right? So we made, I made a list of like everything that was 
terrible about crypto and the whole user experience. I said, okay, we're going to solve all these problems. And um, so that's what we did. So I wrote a white paper, we did the, did the ICO. Friends of mine um, started this, uh, another crypto called Nimic. That was their first angel investor. Anybody heard of Nimic? Really cool cryptocurrency. Their, their problems are even worse. But um, really, really good team, but unbelievable drama. And um, every, every single crypto I've talked to has unbelievable drama. It's really bizarre. I don't, it's not like that in other business categories that I'm in. It's certainly not like, like, like that in the yoga world. So it's, um, it's a little contrast. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you know. So. I mean, I see how the two go together. You do crypto, most people who are in crypto do yoga, they probably need it, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so basically, we, so then we raised the money, and, you know, we started with 2.7 million, and pretty soon, it basically takes a million dollars to raise 2.7 million. So you really only have 1.7 million because you're doing all the marketing, and you're giving people incentives and discounts, and the people that are too late are saying, well, I'll give you $100,000, you have to give me the original lower price, and we're like, well, okay, you know. So pretty soon, down to 1.7 million. And then we, we finished it, and then ETH starts going down, and we're like, well, should we sell it? Should we go into Bitcoin? Going around trying to find a bank that will take it, no bank will take it, you know? It's not that easy to go liquidate into fiat, so then we're saying, Tether. so what should we do? Yeah, so what should we do? Tether. Yeah, maybe it should have been better. <laughs> so we thought, well, we don't want to gamble. It's like, not just gambling if we do anything. And you know, Mike Novogratz was saying, oh, keep this going to go through the roof. So we're like, just leave it there. Anything else is gambling. And first it went down, 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 down. <laughs> and pretty soon, like, I start realizing that out of the five founders, only two of us are doing all the work. That the other ones are cocaine addicts and just, just an absolute mess and um, not putting in any, any work, any value. They you know, come to work, pretend that they're working, and there's two out of the five, they're doing everything. <coughs> and they, of course, want a salary for doing nothing. And so we basically just watched our money dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And then we got lucky because we hired, we found this company called, well, I'm not gonna say, I don't like to say bad things, but we found the company, there were these superstar coders, team in America, they were, Artificial intelligence experts, okay? I mean, the, the CEO of this company was a world famous developer. That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we hired this company, and three, four months later, they're <coughs> two months late. They're $100,000 over budget. We have $800,000. Now they've spent $650,000, and they go bankrupt. And it turns out they've been lying to us. They have all these internal problems they haven't told us about. And they don't deliver us one line of usable code, and we're down to $140,000, and we have nothing. Except and all of our, and these guys know, like they remember what happened, the little thing. And so I'm like running around talking to all of our people, like, don't sell, don't sell, don't worry, we'll figure it out. And and during this time, my father passed away. And like when it rains, it pours. I was fighting with these with found with with, with uh, some of the founders, the founders. The co-kids, the co-kids. That they went into our smart contract. Our contract, they stole, they stole 110 ETH, they stole um, 3% of the supply, the total supply, and they walked out and started dumping it in the market. So I took my entire inheritance from my father and I bought it all up to save the company. And um, it was hard, it was a hard time. So basically everybody was fucking us. When was that? 2018, spring, right? So, then we found, we got a really lucky break. We found a guy who, named Yuri, who is one of the founders of StakeNet. I don't know if you've heard about StakeNet. This guy is an Ukrainian guy, and um, he really saved our ass. And he, he, for a small fraction of what we paid AGI, coded our entire blockchain in six weeks. Just said AGI. <laughs> Just forget that. <laughs> So in six weeks, one guy did, did for a tenth of the price, basically, did what this entire team of 10 geniuses are supposed to do. They couldn't do it in five months, right? Those and, Ukrainians, and it, they, don't, they don't play, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and it all worked. It all worked perfectly. What was his name? Yuri. Yuri. Yeah. And that's it. And, and he did that on the side while he was work, doing his, he was the head of 
uh, of uh, development for his own cryptocurrency. So which, which coin is he a part of? That's Statement. Statement. Okay. So yeah, forever grateful to Yuri. Shout out to Yuri. <laughs> I need Yuri contact yeah. information, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Got a couple yeah. of projects he might be interested in. Yeah. yeah, he's a pretty amazing guy. So, and we found two guys from Belarus, which is where he grew up from, right? So, and Henry's from Belarus, and they did our wallet. They did our wallet the same time frame. Frame, and we released. They released everything. We're great. Shout yeah. out to the Eastern Europeans. <clears throat> they kicking ass and taking names up in the yeah. department. Yeah. So it was like. So we released about a year ago. We just had a one-year anniversary for blockchain, and we knew what. Give a round of applause for that, man. I tell you what, listen. I mean, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but I just want to tell you. I, and, and, and obviously, you guys should know this, man. There are so many companies in our industry that have been through a lot less than what you've been through fully, right? Yeah. They raised this capital, and a lot of them raised a shit ton more than two point seven or one point seven or even. 4.2, whatever you add them both together. Um, it's just, it's amazing that you not only uh, were able to salvage your project, but you actually believed in it so much. I gotta be honest with you, um, you took out a little gamble, right? You took your, your life savings and you turned around and dumped it into a project where you're literally saying, hey man, three of, three of the five guys that, that are working on this for me, not only do they not provide any value, but they're actually thieves and drug addicts. Um, so they're, they're literally liabilities to the project. Are you still partnering with these guys? No, no. no it, so the one one guy that, that started in the beginning that had that been brought in like me just to code their website basically is my partner now, Nick Saponato, and he's a genius, he's amazing. And um, he's an incredibly talented guy. And he's, two of us have just been basically doing, doing everything and now we get this fantastic team around us. So. But what did you do with the other three founders? They just walked off, you know, they walked off, they started another crypto, and of course, that didn't go anywhere. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of that one so we can avoid it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the name of that shit show? <laughs> like, honestly. It's okay, you'll let it slip later. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry. We'll, we'll come see him after. I'll buy you a shot. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the bad enough. But I, I, anybody, you know, everybody's got their story. I want to get another round of applause for this brother, man. Two times over. Two things here, man. Number one, first and foremost, is you strong, you, you, you show great character and resolve, right? And also, too, uh, you're classy as shit, man, obviously. These people fucked you in a variety of ways and you still don't want to throw them under the bus. Uh, you're a lot better than me. Hopefully, I could be like that when I grow up. Maybe I have a different hat. <laughs> it's just the hat. Maybe the hat, the hat that could keep me a little bit more in line, right? Less aggressive. Well, you know, I, I didn't take a salary. Nick and I didn't take a salary for a long time. We, but the, but the we drug addicts were getting salaries. Well, no. Once they were out, they well, that's when they really left, when we were like, there's no money for a salary. Oh, uh, okay. Then they were like, well, Okay. But then they just stole stuff and dumped it. So, um, and you know, you wanted to sue them. Everybody said, no, sue these guys. And, and Shout out to baby, baby Israel, man. Uh, uh, what was that his name? Uh, Happy birthday to the baby one more time, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he talked to our lawyer and he's like, well, you can't sue them because, you know, the FBI is going to take, they don't have to do with blockchain. They're going to tell the SEC and the SEC is just going to come in and shut you down. They don't care. They just want to. Where were you incorporated? Look for targets, you know. Where are you incorporated? In Costa Rica. The SEC has zero to do with it. Yeah, but they still they still can send you letters, and the, and my partner Nick was They'll in the United States, and they can cause trouble. And the lawyers have not built, you know, just walk away, <laughs> walk away, give away, give a way, way forward, just walk away, and so and just, you know make it work and show them. And, that's what we did. So. I mean, I think it's awesome. I think you so. showed extreme resilience. So where are you guys at today, man? You guys yeah. launched your blockchain and... So, so uh, basically, we locked, the plus, locked, we launched the blockchain and it did some really cool things. We did a lot of firsts in the industry. Um, we basically... I was really into masternodes coins. I don't know... If, who knows what masternodes are? You probably know about Dash. Like Dash invented masternodes. Um, and Dash gives about 7% a year. I didn't think that was enough, especially if you're you know, coming later in the market. I wanted to give people a big incentive to buy Divi. I wanted to give people 100% at least the first year. And But I knew that people would just, if they were getting that much reward, they would dump it on the market. And it would push the price down, which would just ruin the whole thing. And so I need to come up with a solution. So what I came up with the idea is a multi-tiered master node system, where if you basically hold uh, three times as much as the lower tier, then you're going to get us a 5% higher interest rate. So so we have five different tiers, copper, silver, gold, platinum, and gold. So, and so we basically gamified the, the, 
the system. And what's, what's cool about that too is that as the, the ecosystem grows, we can assign different, basically to the tiers, we can assign different roles in, in the protocol. So we could say, for example, that if you're gonna have a diamond or a platinum node, of which there's about 60 of them right now, we could have all of them be a content delivery system or put, put torrents in them or something like this. So you can basically assign different roles because you, you have sort of diversified the system. And it worked really well. We found people, they start with the copper node and they, they start looking at the higher levels and they all want that, so they start accumulating their rewards and when they get close, they always end up throwing more money in. So not only are they holding their coins, but they're buying more so they can get to the next level. So it's worked really well, and so that's rough. the main reason why our price has not, is not, is not up. We also wanted a reason for people to stake, and so the stakers are actually the ones building, building the blocks. So what we, what we came up with is a lottery system where every week, on um, once a week, we give away 11 uh, lottery winners. There's one big one and 10 little ones, as you're explaining all this, yeah. the thought crossed my mind that I know that this one person in here is just very intently listening. As I looked around, sure as shit, he's definitely listening. <laughs> so, <laughs> so go ahead. I'll have to ask why later, but oh, yeah. cool. he'll ask you why, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so, bas so basically, so basically, you take the hat, and there's over, it's a one minute block, so, so each staker wins gets a hash that represents that block, and at the end of the week, those are all compared, I have hashes, win the lottery. And so it's really cool, because we have people like, that are really poor from Africa, they just have a little bit of Bibi. Right here, won one yesterday. Oh, this cool. Morning. This morning. Great, yeah, yeah. and so you, can, so you can win, and it's just part of the block award, it's part of our inflation rate. So we were at 108% inflation, which everybody said was impossible, but we did it, and it's because of the gamification, and we knew our target market, market are millennials, crypto people, gamers, they're gonna like this, and it worked. So um, the lottery, people love. We get a lot of people from all over the world now that are buying it. They just buy enough so they can get some little lottery tickets and they hope to, hope to win. And when they do, they're always really excited on the Telegram. Um, another thing we focused on because we didn't have a lot of money and because certain companies ate up our entire marketing budget, um, we really focused on our community. So for example, I, I'm a customer service guy. I run two resorts, so I know that it's really important to treat everybody really well. And what I consider a Telegram community to be like the lobby of your hotel. People walk in there, they want to see what the vibe is like, right? And I, and the vibe of most Telegram communities in crypto is awful. You know, you have all these crypto bros and, and people that are just very aggressive and insulting each other and, and fighting and, and um, Shout out to our Telegram group, <laughs> we ain't with that shit, we're family. <laughs> we collaborate, yeah. we don't compete. Uh, we work together, we share background information, experiences, and resources, and build each other up. And I'm grateful for all of you guys. So give yourselves a round of applause, man. I appreciate you guys. So I personally, I personally uh, reach out to every single person that comes to the Telegram and say hi, and introduce myself. About half of them don't think I'm real. They think I'm a scammer or a fisher or something. And, but, but they always really appreciate it. And I tell other CEOs that, and they're like, oh, you must waste so much time you know, doing that. But it's really it's not like that. And a lot of people buy Vivi because of that. Because of that, they get a little bit of, of attention. A lot of people that said they were going to get like a master, a lower level master, end up tripling their amount. And a lot of people that are thinking about selling, you know, they talk to me and and I and I, you know, I treat them well. I treat them like customers and treat them like family, and, and they stay with us. So that's one of the biggest uh, examples, right? There's a reason why your why your project is doing well in that regard. Um, this is one of the things that uh, I actually hear about often, right? Um, these teams that raise all this capital, they have zero accountability to, the, to their investors and to the communities, right? So it's like people have, you know, they don't, they don't, you go in their Telegram channels and if there's any activity at all, it's very seldom from the actual team members. It's usually from people that are active in Telegram on that chat, not just specifically people from the team itself. So for you to be the CEO of your project, to be active within your community, obviously that's gonna make people feel good about it. To say, hey, this guy's still active, he's still working, um, he's not hiding, right? Um, he's still building, and if they have direct questions, they can ask you, they can feel better about the fact they can actually reach out and touch somebody. So that's definitely a good strategy, man. I encourage you to keep that up. Yeah, it's worked, it's worked really well. I don't understand why other, other cryptocurrencies aren't doing it, but. Well, like you said, you know, uh, unfortunately, 
uh, truth is, a lot of these companies that were ICOs, especially in 2017, did not have the experience, did not have the experience that you had in both running businesses and also the customer service orientation aspect of your of your background. Right. Um, that's important. Yeah, you know, for me, I had never, I had never taken investor money before in business. I always had to do, deliver a product that actually made money. It makes a big difference when you have somebody that has that experience that thinks about actually making money and expenditures and keeping costs down. And Despite contrary belief, when an investor gives you money, he wants to know how is he going to get it back. <laughs> like, you know, he wants to have an idea. Okay, if I give you this amount of money, right? Okay, how are we going to make this money back? So yeah, that's important for sure. Yeah, and I, you know, I take my responsibility as CEO very seriously. People are entrusting me with their money, and I'm not just going to walk away from it. So, so I have to do everything I can to make it work. You know? and so, uh, I want to talk a little bit about your your basically the yes. core premises of Vivi, because I'll be honest with you, I didn't know much about your project until you reached out to me recently. I did some uh, did some reading on it, obviously the material you sent to me, and I dug around the, uh, the website some. And it does look like, um, obviously, a lot of the issues that you guys are solving. I don't know if anybody else has had the ability to take a look at what you guys were doing. But why don't you tell the, uh, the, uh, us a little bit specific? Yeah. About so, it. so now, you know, right now, I've told you about these two kind of gimmicky things, right? This is what we do in the beginning. So this multi-level master node, and we also did the lottery, and they had specific reasons. Some people think it's just sort of a gimmick, um, but they actually they actually solve important problems that keep people inside the ecosystem and keep people excited. Um, but what we really wanted to do is make crypto easier. And the reason was because, and I still believe that one of the problems of mass adoption, you know, we've had 10 years, it's not getting adopted, right? And the reason is because the people who you need to build products that use crypto need to be the artists and the designers that are probably not going to be using crypto. It's too difficult for these people. You need real product designers, you need artists, and you need people that, you know, are these genius product creators, right? And, <laughs> and, and so I felt it was very important to make crypto easy, easy so that people could do that. The other thing that, that I realized is that, you know, people were walking around shop to shop trying to convince people into accepting Bitcoin, and they would, you know, after a long talk, get them excited about it, they put a little sign in their window, but then nobody actually is doing it, right? And that's not the way it's going to happen. The way it's going to happen is if somebody has to design and make products that you can only get with crypto. And just offering crypto as a, an option isn't going to cause mass adoption because most people are just going to keep using their credit cards. It's a lot easier. And you're not going to have really great product design until crypto is easier. So you can kind of see this whole system. It's very important to make crypto really easy so that non-geeks and programmers actually can enjoy using it without being afraid. And so one of the biggest problems- You said something a little while ago that I thought was hilarious, but it's absolutely true. You can't do it drunk, it's too difficult. Now usually I say make it any group, right? Um, unfortunately, you want to make it to where about third grader, uh, third grader can understand, so. If an eight-year-old can't understand whatever it is you're creating, it's too complicated for most people. And it's not that people aren't capable or qualified to learn, it's that just business in general, if you have to educate your consumer before they're gonna use your product, they're never gonna use your product. Very simple. It's, it's, it's too challenging of a process. Yeah, I had several people tell me that after the ICO, like, I was gonna put in $10,000, but I couldn't figure out how to do this. You know, like, you couldn't even find it. Do the instructions, you know, trying to go and get an account on Coinbase and then get an account on another exchange and send it over there and change from Bitcoin to 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 Divi or to Ethereum and it just it was such a mess, right? And I felt embarrassed actually, you know, trying to even talk my family into doing this. So and I realized, well, this and they would come at me like, well, this is supposed to be easy. I'm like, well, we're going to make it easy. It's not easy now. So, and um, so what? So we're basically tackling all these different points of friction. So one of them is probably the worst, everybody knows about this, is the on-ramp and off-ramp, right? How do you get your cash into and out of crypto? So what we did is we bought a bank. So we could do it ourselves. Because we saw a lot of cryptocurrency companies, they were making deals with banks. But cryptos and banks are natural enemies. You know that's not gonna end well. And that's going to be a problem. When I sat down with these guys that had this e-bank in Costa Rica, one of the first things I said, I got the deal with them, I said, you know, 
we're like gonna destroy your business, right? If we do this, and like with cryptos, like your remittance company, like remittance says they're gonna be destroyed by cryptos, and and they're like, that's why we're talking to you. We realize that they've been doing this for two years, and they've built this. They can go now into a place this this big in three days and put up a remittance company office, which they're doing. We're setting up six right now in Costa Rica. They can do it for six thousand dollars with two employees, and they can undercut. They can sell for half of what Western Union does, and so what they're doing is is basically opening up right next door to Western Union and MoneyGram wherever they can. So and we're working on a scaling process. So we have the, the physical part of it, so we can scale it. People are asking me, like, why are you doing this? You're in crypto, but the fact is that crypto is going to take a long time to be adopted. You know, when we started this, everybody thought it was going to happen overnight, but then it didn't. And so now we're more realistic. This is gonna be a five to 10 year, you know, knock down, drag out, all out war against the banks and the way things are. Like any other technology, it takes a while to be adopted. And so we've developed a strategy to go and beat the banks at their own game. So by buying one. And what's cool about what we've done that's different than all the other cryptocurrencies is we actually own a controlling share of this bank, which allows us to pass all the KYC information in the background between our company and the banking entity, and we're buying 30% of various different companies. Which means that if somebody does KYC within our wallet, they don't have to then go and do it again to use the bank, or do it again to use the exchange. We can pass it through because it's 30% 30, 30 is that magic number. And, um, so Shout out for this man having some, something to think with, man. Congratulations, man. That was another process you came up with that unfortunately I can't see how mo other people haven't thought of it, right? Um, there's, a, there's several companies that are, are going to have um, fiat in their wallet, but they're all making deals with companies that they're trying to put out of business. And if it, my goal is to drive fees to zero. I feel like fees should be zero the way email became zero. And that basically, we need to have a flat platform that's very unfair the way, the more poor you are, the higher you pay in fees, and the richer you are, the less you pay in fees. People that need crypto the most are the ones that are being charged the most by all these banking fees. So what we're trying to do is basically reverse that. So we're, we're gearing up everything to have a platform where it's very, very, very cheap, nearly zero. So. Um, and that's the war we want with remittance companies. The remittance business is $700 billion a year, right? It's much bigger than all of crypto is right now. And we can go in right next to Western Union, which is what we're doing. At, we can charge half of what they're doing. What takes them five minutes takes us 30 seconds, and we give people their own bank account. They can, we can get them a debit card to send to their, to their friends and family in Nicaragua or wherever they are, like in Costa Rica. And, they, and their family can, over time, can learn how to how to use that debit card. And then what we can use do is use Divi. Over time, we have this, these loyal customers. The idea is build build hundreds of thousands of customers, and then slowly indoctrinate them into the cryptocurrency world as it becomes as it actually makes sense. Because um, right now you're trying to you know, force people to use crypto who are just not ready for it. And in the developing world, people don't need it. people need it more in these other countries. So. What we're able to do with this with this e-bank is we can offer bank accounts to every country in the world except for North Korea and um, Iran, maybe Iraq, pretty much every other country. The accounts only need a national ID and a phone number. That's all they need, which which brings in a couple a couple billion people that basically don't have banking now um, can have our bank accounts on their phone and. We'll be able to do um, wire transfers, and they'll be able to swap from fiat to crypto. And we have what's called a one-click bank account. So basically, you click the button, take a picture of your ID, and now you have your account. Not available. That's simple. Oh. Give a round of applause, man. That's how the process is. Right? I'll tell you what. I, I, um, the reason why I was saying that, and by the way, I, I read a lot of this on your website. You know, and I was looking at what you guys are doing, and I got to tell you, um, and I told you this earlier this week. Um, you can't buy my opinion, right? Uh, I think everybody here who knows me knows that as well. But I'm really impressed with your project. I really am. And I hope that you're able to deliver on, on everything that you guys are talking about. 
big, I'm not a really big fan of your graphics or your, the name of your project. I think it's a little awky. However, what you're doing is fucking awesome. And the way everything looks, like the user interface and stuff like that, it's really smooth, it's really easy to understand. I wonder sometimes that maybe I can get some of my tech guys to ask some of these tougher questions. Um, because I know that, you know, some of the conversations that we've had in the past related to like one button uh, wallet addresses are is that the reason why these wallet addresses are so long and extensive is because so they could be differentiating the actual purpose to that. So I wonder how is it that you were able to circumvent that? Um, so what we're doing is we're, the fact, we, we basically started by forking Pivx. And Pivx is a fork of Dash, Dash is a fork of Bitcoin. So what we're doing is taking that technology and we're adding Namecoin. Who knows about Namecoin? So yeah, usually, it's, Namecoin is a top 10 coin like three years ago, but most people have never heard of it somehow. And, and um, Namecoin is really amazing. So you can basically put any, you put any type of metadata you want into the UTXO set. So you can do a lot of really amazing things. So that allows us to do things like making Bitcoin really easy to use. Like Bitcoin is going to be able to use use with human readable addresses, you're going to be able to do one click swaps between Bitcoin to Divi or to Fiat with, um, within the wallet with just a single click, or what we also call no click, where you can set it so that every incoming transaction of Bitcoin will be, say, 50% put into Fiat, 20% into Divi, and 30% into a gold back token. You can, have, you can have that kind of system just sort of set up and done automatically for you. Um, how many wall, How many uh, tokens is your wallet compatible with currently? When we release the the mobile wallet, it's going to have just Bitcoin and Diddy. But what we're trying to do is make a multi-coin wallet where we basically link them all together. I was actually just reading about Polkadot because Nehemi is an advisor on there, and I, I didn't know about it. And they're kind of doing something similar. We basically want to take the superpowers of all the all the top tokens, including EOS, one of the ones I like, and and basically put them in one place so people can use all the best powers of each one within the wallet. And we'll put Libra in there and whatever other things. I mean, if people want to use it, it'll be in there. So, and then we make a platform that people can build apps for where you can use all these different blockchain powers in one place. I like it. So um, talk to us about some key notes and uh, key, key upcoming dates in your roadmap. What are you looking at moving forward? One of the things we learned is never to set dates in your roadmap. <laughs> what we do, it's really cool. We haven't updated in a while, but what we do is we list all the features, all the stuff that people want to know, and then we have like a counter from zero to 99. They'll sit at 99 for a while, but basically, then people can look and they can see how far along we've gone, you know, with each of these features. And they don't have to ask us, well, how far are you in? And, and when is the Ethereum integration going to be? ready and this kind of stuff because they can just go look and they can see over 30 percent there or whatever. And it's a really good way to do it. It takes so much pressure off of us from trying to make certain dates. So what we do is we we really focus on having um, really good communication. We have a newsletter that goes out every single Friday at noon. Um, for, so basically the wallet every two weeks. So people see this constant progress. And you know, like Nick and I are on the Telegram every single day, just chatting with people, answering questions. We do videos. We're, you know, we have so many influencers right now talking about us and writing on the shows. So it's funny, you know. Now, two years later, everybody's like, "Well, yeah, this is great. We're so excited." You know, people. It's so weird. It's just such a different reception than it used to be when we started about this whole crypto made easy thing. People are starting to. I don't know if it's a feeling of desperation. You know, people realize, well, we thought this was all going to go huge, and now it didn't, and. They're looking for a reason. They want somebody, somebody to blame for it all. And a lot of people realize it's like it's just too hard. It's too confusing. And so they see what we're doing, and we've been, you know, singing this idea for two years, and 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 we've delivered on a few different things. Like for instance, we are the only master node you can set up with a single click in the wallet. And so you can go into our wallet. If you have enough coins, you hit a button. You put in your your PayPal information or your credit card information. And it sets it up in the cloud for you with a single click. And, and a lot of companies have said they're going to do that or that they do that, but when you actually go and look at their process, it involves like copying lines of code and all kinds of stuff. It's not actually one click. So we, we did that early. That's one of the first things we did is kind of a tech demo to show that we were really serious, that we can accomplish this, 
And this is what easy looks like. We took a four hour master node setup process and made it into a few seconds. So everything's like that. This, this is our model. One click, everything. You know, so um, any questions? Shout out to Divi making the round of applause, man. We get some questions and answers. We got questions. We got questions. So uh, a big part of the hemp industry right now is banking. Are you open to having more people use your coin, you know, for other industries, cannabis, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, it is definitely. And, and, and the banking side is called Redivi. The company that we bought is called Re, and we put it together Divi, we thought it was kind of, kind of cool, so we just made it Redivi. And um, Redivi, we're offering, offering banking to the hemp industry. So, but it has to be KYC. And the other thing is that if you're American, you need to know that if you open a bank account in any country in the world, that automatically gets sent to the central government in Costa Rica or any other country, which automatically flags the IRS, and they basically tell the IRS immediately if you open a bank account in another country. And it's the only country in the world that does that. That's how the government spies on us. Shout out to the American government. Fuck you. <laughs> it sounds amazing. I've been in this space for a while, and I, I'd always tell people the one thing you can't do is just easily one click between fiat and crypto. That's always been the problem because chargebacks, because you know people stopping there. You know, so you do everything through wire, or how do you how do you get away with doing that? Well, so in this case, we can actually put the bank account and the keys to your bank account using Namecoin associated with your with your account in the in the UTXO set. So the protocol itself can open up the bank account because we own the bank we can code the bank to communicate directly with our protocol. So there's no chargebacks because you can already check to see that the funds are actually there and you just do it. So that by owning our own bank, we can do stuff that nobody else can do. Uh, how many, and just, you asked earlier, but how come other companies aren't buying banks? Like I, I've heard this before and I, I, always, it, I always hear that banking is always the problem, banking is always the problem. And why aren't people buying more banks? Well, what was special about this particular bank? They're all gonna buy banks after they see what we did. I mean, it's still, it's still, it's still, it's still. Obviously, Costa Rica has, doesn't have the SEC, right? That helps somewhat. Um, as you know, Brock did have a bank as well, right? Um, that didn't turn out too well. Um, so there are a few other companies that did have banks, but what he's done is different. It's, uh, it, it, it's not so much as the, uh, the actual banking license or the banking feature, because that's actually pretty common. In fact, most exchanges have banking licenses. Uh, and money transfer licenses as well. Um, what it is more than anything else, what he's done that's extremely uh, uh, intuitive and creative is he created a seamless KYC process. Um, that in itself is worth its weight with gold. And the fact that you're able to issue these bank accounts with just a national ID and a phone number, um, that's impressive, my brother. That's so, yeah, so basically, but you can only transfer $1,500 a month with these accounts, or remittance accounts. Anything about that? You have to do like a normal bank where you have to do proof of where your funds actually came from, right? So um, they figured that with the money laundering and all that, well, how bad can it be if it's $1,500 a month, right? But for 90% of the people in the world, $1,500 a month is all they'll ever need. Yeah, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. And that other 90% are the ones that need crypto more than us. So that's the real market. That's the problem is people think about their own situation. Everybody's trying to, everybody asks me, well, when am I gonna buy my coffee? And I'm like, I have no idea. I'm not worried about buying your coffee with Diddy. You know, we're talking, we're talking to people and we're building assets in Africa and, Bank India, and, Bank, and Venezuela. Uh, you know, obviously that that process is something that was hyped a lot on the campaign trail in 2017. It's good to see somebody actually coming through on their process uh, and, and uh, their promises, especially with, um, you know, you got fucked every way possible. And with that, you ran out of money, and still you went and cashed in your own chips and still put your project together. I'm impressed, my brother. I really am. Crypto Kid, you got some technical questions, sir? Sure. Of course. You <laughs> so you said it's based on like Dash, or <laughs> it's UTXO based, right? Yeah, so pivot, pivot. That's, that's one of the oh, things yeah. I was talking about. <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> uh, I like. The uh, backwards compatibility, it's interesting. Um, so what other features are you thinking about bundling in to this inclusive system like besides that? 
KYC aspect? Well, the, the bank accounts, I think, is the most important one because of the, the on-ramp and off-ramp. What we really want to get to with that is to have zero fees. Because I feel that part of why crypto feels like monopoly money to people is because of the, the friction that's there and the difficulty and the, and the amount of money you have to pay. And I feel that, especially with our system, because we have this lottery system and we have staking and we have the mansion of the street, basically three ways to earn more coins. If we make it really easy for people to get in and, in and out of fiat to Divi, um, then people will choose, they can choose to pull in fiat, but pretty soon they're gonna say, why am I keeping this in fiat where I'm, I'm, not, I'm not earning anything? So they'll put it in Divi where they have this chance of running the lottery and just need a lot of, a lot of small users, you know, m and companies in Africa have shown that you can turn, turn a giant, make a giant business out of a whole bunch of very small customers. And all our people, all our people in Africa are just like, they're saying, you know, banks suck in Nigeria. You know, we don't trust them, we don't trust them. We don't trust the government. We need this, and we can offer accounts in Nigeria. We can offer accounts in India and China, too. It's not illegal for us to do that. So it might be illegal for them to use it, but it's not illegal for us to <laughs> offer it. So. Trivial side steps, right? <laughs> So, yeah. how, so how is this, uh, isn't this all possible as a token on Ethereum or EOS? Yeah, we have. If, if, we, we if have. that's the case, would you be open to pivoting or not necessarily you implying a centralized entity, but the community? We, we, we have actually discussed multiple times, like just porting the whole thing on EOS. It's the only other, uh, only crypto we could consider doing that. You know I, I know so. a guy that can get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna say who he is, but I'm saying. He's got a lot of free time. I'm gonna say. But at the very least, I think EOS will probably end up being a, one of the the most important uh, smart contract blockchain that's part of our system that will that will work in conjunction with. You know, either we'll work out the deal to if you do it, we just do it. You know, FYI, he's, not, watching, he, right? he's not the only guy in EOS I know. So if you do want to get over to EOS, I'm sure we can look you up, no problem. But Luke is more than com com uh, he, 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 he's more than confident. I'm not sure if you've met Luke Stokes, but uh, he's a brilliant developer himself. I have a question on the fiat and uh, the What's the relationship there? Is it uh, because you mentioned you inflate the uh, quite often? So how? How do people actually uh, use your yeah. product? I, I think it's still not out there, but well, what do you guys plan like, for people to use it to buy things when there are no, no banks around? I guess I don't really understand the question. I mean, right now we're really not focused on trying to get coffee shops to sell stuff with Divi. We're actually focusing more and much more long term. We're in the, what we call the network building phase. We're trying to get get the nodes out there, get them spread out. You know, we want, right now, with our Moji system, which is our master node one like cloud installer, they're pretty much, almost every master node is centralized on, in DigitalOcean in Amsterdam. So that needs to be spread out. We need to have, you know, a whole bunch of hosting companies. So, and so, so what's, the, what's the use case? Uh, use case of the... Well, it would be the same as, as a dash. I mean, as far as, the, the token part goes, as far as the payment part goes. But what, what we're doing is that we have this sort of, a, what Maincoin does is it sets up a metadata system that is in a, a DVNS, so a decentralized DNS system. So you basically register names, phone numbers, emails, bank account numbers, whatever kind of information you want associated with your accounts, and you pay for that. So you may pay like a dollar to, to register your email or something. So if a business wants somebody to be able to sell, send them Diddy or Bitcoin, and all somebody needs to know is their phone number or their email address, and that's all they'll know. That they'll just they can just look them up, and they can see whether the account's been verified, and just send them. They don't have to worry about even asking the person for their for their account number or deal with this long long address. And then what's the uh, yeah to crypto uh, interaction? Uh, you you bought a bank to do that, so how how does that come into play then? So they don't have to, without the tokens. Without the tokens, so like if you release, say US, US you have to purchase Bitcoin or ETH first, right? And then buy the US. Or is US available on Coinbase now, right? Yeah, um, but you know, say one that's not on, on, on Coinbase, right? 
you have to purchase, you know, Bitcoin and then so trade. It's not, it's not for spending, it's just for the on-ramp initial basis. On-ramp, yeah. You have the ability to buy directly with fiat. And you have all these bank accounts in places where typically these people can't get bank accounts. Um, you know, that, that component is huge to me. I don't know, like, for you and your company's focus, but I'll tell you what, that, that's a win right there. If you guys market that correctly, you can get a huge piece of the market share. I would love to talk to you about, more about that. And, and I mean, I have strong ties in a lot of different parts of the world that could definitely grow your project really quickly. Yeah. Um, that, that's a huge aspect to, uh, to solve the mass adoption, the honoring, right? Um, how many different fiats do you accept? Well, right now it's three. It's US dollars, euros, and Costa Rica, colonies. So, what are the processes to add more? It'd be obviously the banking license and the. We'd actually have system. to talk the central bank of Costa Rica into allowing us to do more. But luckily, Costa Rica is a very small country, so we know Everybody. we know the regulators. We, you know, we, the next president wants to join the board, and this kind of stuff. So it's, it's really easy to get in touch with all the right people. Shout out to Costa Rica. <laughs> this is what Puerto Rico can be uh, without SEC influence. So all of you guys, uh, you know, nervous about what would happen if Puerto Rico became independent. You guys seem to miss one part, right? If we were an independent nation, and these are my opinions, y'all, there's nobody else's opinion. Yep. But if we were an independent nation, we get to write our own laws. Yep. So um, a lot of times when people think about Puerto Rico being independent, they think about Puerto Rico being independent under the current legal system that we have, or the current laws that we have. That's not possible, right? We can't trade, we're still stuck under the Jones Act, we have all these banking restrictions. We have all these incorporation issues, and we have the SEC. They got this so far. They, they put up our eyes. Um, if we had the ability to write our own laws, then we could create banking systems and regulations that would be conducive to corporations to do business here. And if we could somehow negotiate, and still have friendly relationships with the United States, and keep uh, free and clear immigration. I say, you know, maybe giving up a base or two that they spent, you know, ten to twenty billion dollars on creating here. Um, you know, you can see how we could have a, a, a symbiotic relationship that would be conducive to both parties. But um, yeah, no, uh, I, I look at what, what, what you're doing is extremely clever. Um, I'd like to learn more, I honestly would. I'd like to learn more about it and whatever ways I can help you guys, I definitely would like to, uh, because the way I look at this is, is, and I think I've made this mention to you guys many times before, um, is that I look at any token, coin, whatever, any cryptocurrency project, as they gain more and more steam, we all win. I don't care what token or coin you win. If this man is somehow to capture, say, another 10% of the population out there, which is fucking massive, right? Because the whole market is like 2%. But whatever whatever big, whatever amount of the population out there that you're able to capture and to bring into crypto, it's a win for everybody in the industry. Not only that, but the system that you're using, if that's able to catch on and other top tokens, recognize that and they, re they say, hey man, this guy's onto something and they utilize that process and they duplicate it with their range and their networks and the capital that they have behind their projects and obviously a lot more of the system will go. Um, but you know, there's still a long way to go in both areas. And so I really, I think one of the biggest problems is people are very confused about how mass adoption is going to happen. And we've had 10 years, it's not working. Things people are doing not working. I was just reading an article about a massive Expenditures from Dash in Venezuela have pretty much created no adoption at all. And um, there's billboards everywhere, but nobody's using it. So, and everybody thought, well, Venezuela, you know, the banks are terrible, the, the money is going up and down, the government's corrupt. That's the perfect use case. So, of course, it's going to work there, but it didn't. So, what's going wrong? You know, there's something, there's something wrong with the way people are thinking about it. And so, a lot of stuff has to be rethought. One of my theories about it is that I mentioned this earlier that. You have to be able to have something great that you're selling that people want, where they're willing to get over that barrier of entry, and you have to lower the barrier of entry. And so basically what we're doing for that is I'm, actually, I'm building a digital nomad space in Costa Rica where we only offer crypto, and, and we're gonna make it really cool. That's one of my hobbies is, is design. So I've been a designer for 11 years, so it's gonna be really cool, really beautifully photographed and videos, and people are gonna see it and wanna stay there. It's going to be made out of a whole bunch of recycled containers. We're going to take everybody to the beach. We're going to have fire dancers and stage and all this really awesome stuff. Everybody's going to go, go there, but if you want to go there, we don't accept your fiat. We just don't. And you're going to have to pay with crypto. Or, and, the, and, the, and our partners. So what we're going to be doing is looking for different partner coins, like EOS or whatever, that want to participate in this. 
and and actually doing this. So people can go, they can work from their computers or in crypto, they can spend it there, they can pay their rent while they're there, they can leave the restaurant. I'll have all my friends, you know, I know everybody there, but like all the store constructors and the ATV rentals, everybody will accept crypto. And if I have to, I'll cash it all out for them on the side, you know, because I have to make it work, you know. And um, but eventually they'll get addicted to Divi and crypto like everybody else that gets into it. And and we'll actually create this whole entire circular ecosystem. It'll be small, but I know everybody's gonna see this. It'll get a lot of press once it's ready, and, and then everybody's gonna wanna do it. You know, we've, we've been talking to people already that are, that are in Bali or whatever, they're like, oh, that's a really good idea. The problem is people are afraid to use money, to lose money. I'm like, well, you have to be willing to lose money, you know? It's an, it's an investment in the future of what, the crypto world we wanna see, right? So. I mean, if, if it doesn't work for you, just start accepting the fiat. As long as you build something people want to go to, you'll get customers. Well, it's harder for others to do this. With us, we're going to make it really easy for people. If we say we don't accept fiat, we're like, oh, you have a gateway. Like, yeah, yeah, we have, they have a gateway right there. It's like, it's like by the time they're finished their dinner, they'll already have their fiat converted to cryptocurrency and they can pay for it. So, or even while they're waiting. So, we're making this new crypto world possible doing and are going to make the first demonstration of it in Costa Rica and go check my eco building. When's this place going to be built? Um, I think it'll be done within a year. Oh, What's the percentage at? Where, where's the percentage at? One percent. I have the I have the architecture done. Okay, you got a little bit over one percent. Are you in yes. San Jose or where are you? No, it's in on the beach. So sure. it's in Montezuma. Montezuma, great Montezuma place. Montezuma, Santa Teresa. Backpack there, two thousand two. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> I want to, to get a little story which is uh, kind of more, more away from what you did. My, my, view. my view is very simple. Uh, I advised a few times to you, and you gave me, you know, TV, I think three or five thousand dollars, something like that. And uh, I forgot about it, I know about uh, TV, how it's progress and all this. How is the drama and how you get stand and how you read the stuff to, 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 to clear the, the, the field and uh, eventually got to success. But I never, never, never actually check my TV account. And uh, when I got back and I started you know, wondering what else I have. What, what. And I opened. I found seventeen thousand dollars <laughs> from three or five other uh, I didn't pay attention this so, but seventeen thousand dollars and I did nothing. It just grew naturally because of note that uh, was around and the price of TV token, although it was probably a complete shit show. <laughs> Congratulations. Awesome. You were from shit show to shine and stuff. Congratulations. <laughs> this is not financial advice. Spend your money at your own risk, your own risk. Do we got any more questions for the young man? Anybody? Crypto kid, your questions have been satisfied? You sure you don't have any questions on the notes? You good? Maybe one more. I figured you would. Hold on. Coming right at you, crypto. crypto kid, I look forward to these conversations you have with these people. I even forewarned them about you. <laughs> um, so. How come you didn't mention ETH as an option? I'm just curious. <laughs> we, we hate ETH. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and, and it's really very just very per, very personal because during the ICO we like have, had everything figured out and then we had everything set. Our ICO was set to block time, and so then all of a sudden the block started going twice as fast as before, and then they slowed down again, and, and we it made us so mad that uh, we kind of didn't like it. But we're actually gonna integrate ETH in, in ERC-20 tokens. It's very important to us, so we will integrate it. We don't really hate it that much, but there is sort of this internal frustration of what happened to us during the ICO that caused a tremendous amount of stress. It made us worry. It made us worry about it. That was during the Crypto Kitties. And oh, maybe, I should, maybe I should hate Crypto Kitties and not ETH. I just have to mention that uh, since the Crypto Kitties moment, Ethereum has actually matured to the point where the second layer can in fact do 800,000 transactions per second. That is the max that it can do today. So you, your uh, master nodes could be 
plasma chain validators as a second layer of Ethereum, and that could be an interesting transition. Um, and it would provide all the capacity you need with uh, Turing complete blockchain. Yeah, no. I don't understand what he's saying, but I guarantee you he's right. No, definitely, it will definitely be integrated. I, I, have, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of friends that have some great stuff that they're building in ETH, and I want, I want it in, a, in our digital economy. So, so it's very important to us. Yeah, like I said, um, yes. shout out to Vitalik and uh, Joe Lubin, Andrew Keys. We're still cool with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. EAT, it's okay. Uh, you know, ETH had its problems. Uh, but we don't really hate ETH. Without ETH, you wouldn't have had ICO. Well, I, don't really, I don't really hate ETH. So without ETH, you wouldn't have had ICO. You have to keep conscious of it. So um, I think ETH is, will solve the scaling issues. So you got guys like CryptoKid that work on it. Um, and even though he, 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 he looks like a Pokemon, he's actually really talented. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Alright you guys. We get another round of applause for Mr. Jeff McCabin. Okay, so you guys, this is literally the first project that has been up here to present to you guys as a blockchain project. Obviously we had Hollow here a couple of weeks ago. They're kind of like a little different. They're an app, they're not blockchain, they're not decentralized, but nonetheless they were raised in-house. These guys met, the idea was conceptualized here in San Juan, in the meetups, and the developer was also brought in through the meetups, and they also received the funding through the community and community support. This guy, however, is the first guy to come through with a project that's been completely presented to the community. Um, I want you guys to give him some support in terms of like just going, checking out what he's got, give him some feedback. Hey, Crypto Kid, Crypto Kid, hey, I want you guys to give this guy some support, right? Especially you too, right? Both you guys who are devs. I want you guys to reach out to him, give him some support, some feedback, positive and constructive criticism on his project's technical merits, right? And some ideas, right? Because we want to help the community grow. Uh, I like what you're doing a lot, sir. Uh, I also want to connect you with a couple of other people that are, that are in this room that can potentially help what you guys got going on. Uh, and I think it's a great concept, man. Give him a round of applause again, man. This guy's not a great talk. All right, you guys. Yeah, man, that's it, unless anybody's got some more questions. Anybody got some more questions? You got any more questions? No more questions? Oh, wait, 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 we got twin. Where is your twin? Uh, he's somewhere. You're not allowed to bring, you're not allowed to come without your twin, by the way. Go ahead, twin. Uh, sorry, at this point. Um, I might have missed a few questions earlier, but you said you're coming up with a mobile app. Um, is that explicitly a crypto wallet, or is that the link between the service and the crypto? Or? Yeah, it'll have Divi, Bitcoin, and it'll have the fiat currencies in it. So, okay. And then we're gonna start adding the other other cryptos as we go. So we have, a, you know, sort of a, a short list and a long list, and eventually you wanna have all the, anything anybody really wants to buy in the bulls. All, all the top 50 will be in there. You yes. know, we talked about, well, are we gonna put Tron in there? Are we gonna put Craig Wright's bullshit in there? But, you know, if people wanna buy it and sell it, we'll probably put it in there and turn out to just this, Edit stuff because uh, we don't like it. Does the wallet contain the private keys locally on the phone, or is it kind of like Coinbase, where an exchange of the private keys and you just have the password to tell them what to do? Um, yeah, I mean it, it'll work in the same way, and that's actually one of the big, the most important. The same way as Coinbase, or no, 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 it won't be centralized. That's what you mean. Okay. So it'll be non-custodial. So. But that's one of the big problems that needs to be solved, is what do you do with private keys? Because most people you explain to them about private keys and then they start running away, you know? They're like, what, are you kidding me? I have to take a piece of paper and I stick it in my book somewhere and if I lose it, then I lose everything. You know, that's a really important problem. And there's gonna be, there's some cool solutions to that, but my philosophy about it is that people are willing to learn some new things. To come into a new technology, they learn they're willing to learn some things. You just can't make it too difficult. And if all they have to learn is their private keys and everything else works like internet banking and 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 PayPal, then that's doable. Like people will learn that one thing if you can make other incentives good enough for them to do it. So it's you know people are just gonna have to learn private keys in my opinion if they really want to be safe. 
he looked at you, crypto kid, like you wanted to add to that. What about you, Thomas? You want to add to that? Hold on a second, sir. What do you do? Hold on a second, sir. This is one of my other nerds. They're coming for you now. <laughs> Hello, sir. So yeah. what, what, I mean, like, what you said is very true about the private key thing. So what do you tell people to do? Right now? Right now, we, I tell people to do that. I say, print it out and take it and put it in a book somewhere. Put a, put a copy in, in, a, in, in a safe deposit box and, and, and tear a copy in half and send it to two relatives. So that's what I usually tell people. And people wow, how boring. That's exactly what I tell people. <laughs> yeah. it isn't, there isn't a really good solution. I mean, if people are talking about biometrics, but there's two. That's where I was going to go with that. that. Where I was going to go with that was ultimately biometrics. Now, I will tell you, there's a kid that's around here somewhere. His name's Michelangelo. I don't know if you met him. But he's got a hell of an identity solution that he's lost in space. That's what the actual use case should be for it. So maybe you guys can communicate. Because he has a way to measure uh, heartbeats and fingerprints simultaneously. What is your partner, Nick Sabanero, going to present at CryptoCon in Vegas at the end of this month? What? What is he presenting? What is your partner, Nick? What is he going to present at CryptoCon in Vegas at the end of the month? Well, we're going to enter a token tank, so we'll both be there presenting together. So, so we actually got third place in it last, last time. Who's going to Vegas? See you in Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. We'll see you there. Yeah. So we'll be doing this presentation together for Token Tank, and hopefully we'll do better than third place. So we'll see. All right, you guys. Let me get one more round of applause for Mr. Jeff Cab, CEO of Tiffany. How can we reach you, sir? Go ahead and give him a shout out. Give me get your uh, social media, Telegram group, your website, all that good shit. Yeah. So DiviProject.org is the website and find us on Telegram and everywhere else, so easy to find, and I'm, I'm very accessible, so you'll see. Come on our Telegram, and I'll probably say hi. Excellent, man. All right, you guys. Musica!